Boys and girls, hello. You know I must be in a great mood because it's a new week and it's time for a new unit in science. It's science time. And this time we are going to talk about space, which I have been waiting all year to talk to you about. And I know someone else is really excited to talk to you about it as well. Let's check in with our buddy, Discovery Dan. Welcome back to another exciting week of Science Studies Weekly. This Yay. week, we're going to learn about space. Yes. Can we switch to a star background uh, without the Death Star? Thank you. Besides the moon and planets, there are more stars in the sky than there are grains of sand in all the beaches in the world. Most you can't see without a telescope. They come in all different colors and sizes, and the light you see from these stars has traveled across the galaxy. Some stars form patterns in the sky like the Big Dipper, Cygnus, which looks like a swan, Scorpius, which looks like a scorpion. See the tail? And me. Okay, I'm not really one of them. <laughs> but I should be. There are so many cool things to learn about space. All right, see you next week. Stay awesome. So here's what I need you to do. Grab this issue of your Studies Weekly, your Science Studies Weekly. Okay, it's entitled Space, and it's got a picture of this boy who's wearing an astronaut helmet that maybe he made. Okay, it looks very cool. And when you find it, come back and we'll continue the video. So it says at the bottom, there are many objects in space. Stars and planets are in space. The sun and the moon are in space. Would you like to be an astronaut someday, boys and girls? I'm not young anymore, but I would still love to be an astronaut. I think it's the most exciting thing to be. Let's move on. Okay, everybody, so let's start by talking about something that is really close to our planet Earth. It's that white sphere in the sky, the moon. And there's a lot to learn about it. Let's read what's in our magazine. The way the moon looks has a pattern. These pictures show the pattern. The pattern starts over every 28 days. When you can barely see the moon at all, it is a new moon. When the moon looks like a circle, it is a full moon. Can you find the half moons? All right, boys and girls, look at the pictures. I'm going to start at the new moon. Now, when there's a new moon, we really can't see it. Sometimes if it's a really, really, really clear night, you can see a little glow around the edge, but it's almost impossible to see. So we start at the new moon, and every day we can see more of it. We can see more and more of it lit up. The moon doesn't have its own light. The moon is just a giant rock but it reflects light from the sun. It's almost like a mirror, okay? But it's just very rocky and dusty. So follow that yellow arrow. Every night you look at the sun, you look at the moon, I'm sorry, you can see more and more white. Now, when it gets brighter and brighter every day, we call it a waxing moon. The waxing moon means it's getting brighter. Then it becomes a full moon. That means we can see all of one side of it. It's all lit up and reflecting lots of light from the sun down to us. Then it starts to get darker and darker every day. It starts reflecting less light like this. And we just follow it back. Okay. And it's going to go all the way back until it becomes a new moon again. When it gets darker and darker every day, we call it a waning moon. Now, they didn't want me to teach you this in second grade. They figured at Science Weekly, oh, that might be a little confusing, but I think you guys can handle it. Okay, got it? So we have a new moon, which is dark, a full moon. We can see the whole side of the moon. When it gets brighter and brighter every day, it's a waxing moon. And when it gets darker and darker every day, it's called a waning moon. And for it to complete this cycle, it takes about 28 days about 28 days, 
okay? And the moon is so important. That's why in English, we have a day named after the sun, Sunday, and we have a day named after the moon, moon day, which now we say is Monday. Isn't that interesting? Okay, now let's look at page three. Now, this is pretty cool because everybody knows what the sun is. Did you know that the sun is also a star? And it's not the only one. It's just the only one that's close to us. There are actually hundreds of billions of stars. It's crazy how many stars there are. Okay, let's read about this. Stars can be different colors. White or blue stars are the hottest and brightest. Yellow stars are not as hot. Our sun is a yellow star. Red stars are cooler than other stars. And at the bottom it says stars can be different sizes. Red stars are usually the largest stars. So think about that. Usually the stars that are really big are red and they're not so hot. But the blue and white stars, some of them are big, many are smaller, and they are super hot. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about. I have some pictures here for some really big telescopes. Look at that. Now, when we think of stars, we just imagine that space is black and stars are white. No, but there are all different kinds of colors. And it's going to be a little difficult to see, but there's a red star right there. And there's a yellow star. I'm pointing at the bottom left. And I see a blue star right there. Red stars are usually pretty old, by the way. And let's see. Oh, yeah, I see a yellow star there. And, oh, and here's a white star. Okay, so there are many colors. And there are so many stars, we can't even count them all. There are just too many. Look at this next picture. Yep, <laughs> these are all stars. Okay, so we, somebody just pointed a telescope at someplace very, very far away and got this picture. And can you see the blue, the yellow, the white, the orange, and red? It's amazing. So the star's color tells us so much information. Okay, I love it. This is just so exciting. Our star, not too big, not too small, just yellow, not too hot. I mean, it's hot for us. We can't go there. But compared to the other stars, it's just an average, normal, kind of boring star. Not too old, not too young. Okay. Okay, now here's the last part. It says, look and learn. Look at this picture. The stars form a pattern. We call this pattern of stars the Big Dipper. A dipper is like a ladle. Okay, now you see those lines connecting the stars? They're not really there. But a long time ago, somebody looked up at the sky and said, hey, you know what? That kind of looks like a pot. It kind of looks like a dipper or a ladle. So they imagined they saw a picture there, and there are lots of pictures among the stars. We call them constellations. Constellations. Some of them are named after heroes. Some are named after um, different animals. Whatever people looked up and thought they saw, that's what they called it. Okay? And we'll talk a little bit about constellations later. And I'll tell you something interesting about stars that you may not know. They move. Mm -hmm. In the future, the Big Dipper won't look like that. All those stars will have moved. But we can't see them move now because it takes a long time. And they're so far away. Okay, let's move on. All right, boys and girls. So that's the end of this uh, introduction to space. Make sure you read the rest of the issue. You can read the activity on the back. It's pretty interesting to try if you get somebody to help you. 
Okay. And here's the weekly literacy connection. It's in your packet. If you don't have it, let me know and I'll post a copy for you. And that's it, boys and girls. Have a great day. The end.